Hey what is up guys this is Eli for Mobox Graphics and in this video we will be making a low poly version of the TIE Fighter from Star Wars. So let's get started. The first thing we can do is adding a reference image. You can do that by opening the different viewports and then let's say we will be using the right one to start with and go to the options and configure. Make sure the back tab is open and then you can enter a blueprint image of the TIE Fighter. There are plenty of them on Google, so just do a quick search. I'm also going to decrease the transparency so it is easier to see what I will be modeling. And I'm also going to set this up at the front view. Okay, so let's make this right view a little bigger. And instead of starting with a cube or anything like that, we will be using an end side object, which is a hexagon shape. And let's scale this down a little. Um, to make it match the background, we will not be moving the object itself, but the background, as I do it in all my other videos so far. So let's go to this offset values and try to make it overlap each other. If it doesn't overlap exactly, you can also add a decimal behind the number. So I'm going to add 0.5 behind this to make it work. Okay, so when that is lined up, let's make the object editable by pressing C on the keyboard. And we are going in the point mode to select the top points and the bottom points. And that way when we use the scale tool you can scale it up and scale it outwards as well to make it match the exact shape of the wing. In the perspective view you can see this is just a line or a spline as it is called. We want something that is solid so just create a new extrude object and drag the spline inside of it. And under the object tab we will remove this 20 centimeters and set it to zero so it is just one flat piece. Also under the cap step you can select create single object, so when we press C it is editable and just one single object instead of a bunch of objects. I'm also going to align the background image on my front view. Okay, when that is done we can go in the polygon mode and select this one polygon we have so far. After that press I on the keyboard or right click and select the inner extrusion tool. And when you drag you can create this little outline which will be the edge on the wing. Let's also create a second one and extrude it all the way to the center piece here. But you'll see the shape is totally messed up. So what we can do is just scaling it vertically already. But we can also select the edges at the top and the bottom and scale those individually to make it match exactly with the image. I'm also going to scale this up again so it matches the outer ring instead of the inner one. Okay, so when that is done we can use the loop selection tool by pressing U and L and select this ring around the edge and also while holding shift select the middle piece. So pick the extrude tool by pressing D for example and we will extrude this just a little outwards. I don't even want it to be this much extruded so let's move it back in a little. So the next thing we could try to do is making these beams to the corner. The best way I found to do this is enabling the edge mode and selecting the corner edges of this small center piece. And now use the bevel tool by pressing M and S or using the right click menu. And let's use this right view to see what we will be doing. And if you drag out you can see we can create some new geometry on the corners which matches these beams that go to the other side. But if we zoom out you can see the shape isn't exactly the same anymore. There are more sides to it now. So what we could do to fix this is going to the bevel mode and changing this chamfer to solid. And that way the corners will be intact. Let's do the same thing with the corners at the outer ring. It's just the same steps so select them all. But if we are trying to make a bevel on these you can see it overlaps the wing and goes all the way outside of it which we don't want of course. So to fix that we can check the limit option. That way everything will stay limited inside of the object. Okay next up let's go back to the polygon mode and we will be selecting all the polygons we just made so the two polygons at every corner. And with these all selected let's go and right click and choose the bridge tool or press B on the keyboard. And this can be a little tricky to master or you just have luck and it will work from the first try. But what you want to do is clicking and dragging from the polygons at the middle to the polygons at the sides. And you will see it will try to snap to the different points at these polygons. If you get it right you will see you get some nice connections which we were looking for. 
but if you do it just randomly and drop it on any point, you will see it is not looking so good. The only way this will work is dragging it on the top middle point of those polygons at the side. So if you make sure you do that on each one of them, it will turn out just fine. Okay, next up there will be a lot more extrusions on this. But first let's go to the centerpiece and make an inner extrusion on this. So it matches the drawing. And from here I would like to split this up into a second object to make things easier because it will be a lot of extrusions which would try to overlap each other, which isn't a good thing. So let's make a duplicate of this object. And I'm going to hide the first one by clicking these dots until they are red. And now with this center polygon selected on the visible object, we can press U and I on the keyboard to make an inverted selection of the polygons and then press delete to get rid of them. Now you can see we just have this one polygon at the center. So let's unhide the other object now and we will stay inside of the new polygon. And let's take a look at the reference image at the right here. Um, you can see we will be making a lot of extrusions and inner extrusions to give it some more depth. To do this, let's select this polygon and make an extrusion on this. You can use the front view to see how much of an extrusion you want. So that's not very much. And I'm going to scale it down to make the edges slanted like it is shown in the image. But now you can see at the corners it will duplicate these edges we just created with the bevel tool. But I don't want these right here at the moment. So let's select the three ones on every side and press U and Z to melt them together. So let's do that again. Clicking three of them and pressing U and Z. Or you can also right click and select melt. But now in the point mode you can see we still have some lost points which don't have any purpose anymore. So a first thing we can do is selecting all of them by pressing command and A. And then press U and O to optimize or right click and choose optimize. But that doesn't get rid of the points at the center here. So what we can do is just manually selecting them and deleting them. You can also see the shading is a little strange. And that is because Cinema 4D is smoothing this out for us. But we don't want that, we want straight hard edges. So go to the right here and you can select this funk tag and just delete it. And that will get rid of all the smoothing on that single object. You can also do the same thing on the other object as well, just to be sure. Now if you look again at the reference image, you can see the extrusions on the beams are starting from the middle of this extrusion at the center. The easiest way to do this is creating a loop cut at this center piece. So press K and L. Or if you're on an older version of Cinema 4D, press K and you will have to select the loop mode at the bottom right. And this way you should be able to make a cut at the center of this piece. But actually, um, let's undo this and we will select all the corner edges again. And make the solid bevel effect on them again. So it matches with the smaller beams we will be creating. Let's zoom in on this so we can see what is going on. And make this very small bevel on this making sure the solid option is turned on. Okay, after that it is easier to make this loop cut we just tried to make and try to align it with the center again. Now this way if we go in the polygon mode you can select the bottom two polygons and we will be just extruding these outwards. But for this it is easier to hold command or control on the keyboard and use the move tool to tell where the extrusion should stop. The easiest way to do this is in the right view of course. So let's try this while holding command or control. I'm going to try to line them up with the corner of this edge here. So that is a little reference for us on the other sides. Let's do this with one of these diagonal ones and that explains why I want to do this with the move tool instead of with the extrude tool. So when you use this corner handle, which is red in this case, you can move the object freely on the Y and Z axis. So let's line this up again. And we will be doing this on all the other sides as well. So let's take a look at this. And that is starting to look like what we saw on the reference image. But I also find them to stick out a little at the outer points. So what we can do is selecting all of these outer polygons again and move them in a little. Okay, so that finishes that part. Next up, let's finish this centerpiece. So try to select this top polygon. And we are going to make an inner extrusion on this, just very small, and then use the extrude tool to make it go inwards and now I would like to use the inner extrude tool again but you can see this is glitching out very bad 
And that is because we have these beveled edges. So we need an alternative for this. Um, let's undo this. And we can do the same thing as we did with the polygons at the beams. Which is holding control to make a duplicate of the polygons. But in this case instead of using the move tool we will be using the scale tool to make an inner extrusion. That way you can see the corners will be connected more correctly. So I'm just going to scale this down quite a lot. And then make an extrusion outwards again. You can see how much at the front view. And we will be using the scale tool again to make an extrusion again outwards. But not all the way to the edge. So we have this seam right here. And now we can use the extrude tool to make it a little thicker again. Let's make another inner extrusion again with the scale tool. And we can extrude this again. And then do the same thing one more time. And maybe even scale this polygon down a little. To make it more like a hexagon again. And we will extrude this out one more time. So that makes the shape we saw on the reference image. One last detail this needs is the indent on the top and the bottom. So select the two polygons on every side. Pick the inner extrusion tool again. And just make a small inner extrusion which we can move in with the extrude tool. And this way we finished one side of the wing. The next thing we need to do now is selecting both of these objects we created, which is one part of the wing, and we need to mirror it to the other side. Luckily this is just a perfectly symmetrical object, so we can just select both of them and make a duplicate of it, and after that we can just rotate it 180 degrees to make the other side of the wing. You could also be using the symmetry object, but on the reference image you can see that the part on the inner side of the wing is a little different with the outside so in this case it is just easier to make a duplicate of it and do it manually. So let's try getting that in place. But before finishing this up you can see at the back of this one part of the wing there is a gap at the edge. A thing we can do is going in the polygon mode again and right click where you can pick close polygon hole and when you hover above it until it goes white and click it should be fixing that hole for us. You can see I deleted that other part, so now it is fixed, we can duplicate it again and rotate it and put it in place and that way it will look better. You can also select all the objects and use the scale tool to make it just a little thinner. And you can also see there is a small gap in between those. We will be filling this up with just another duplicate of this wing part and move it in the middle and also scale it down just a little so it is a little smaller and gives this indent look. I'm also quickly going to rename this one and group these two together so I know what objects belong to each other. Okay, now we will need to edit this other part at the inside of the wing. And this will be easier because I made this wing out of two objects instead of one. So just find that second object that is laying on top of the wing and get rid of it. And this way we finished up our wing. So let's group this all together and call it wing. As the next step we will be making this little connection from the center sphere to the wing. But as a reference we will also be adding the sphere already. So let's go in that front view and create a sphere. And instead of moving the sphere we will be adjusting the background image again. So go to the options and configure or press shift and V. And we will be adjusting the offset again to make it overlap. Also try to scale it so it fits. And after that we can also move the wing in place again. For the sphere I found it to be easier to work with something like 30 segments instead of 24. And for now we will just keep this untouched and start with the connection between the wing and the sphere. The best way to start with this is a cylinder object. Rotate it and scale it down. And let's try to start at this point right here. Try to scale it so it almost fits already. And we are going to make this cylinder editable. But before moving on, we will also go in the point mode for example. And press command and A to select all the points. And then press U and O again to optimize all the points. This way the caps at the end and the top will be connected to the ring around it. Otherwise if we would try to move the polygons at the top or the bottom, it would just disconnect with the other part of the cylinder. Okay, so now it is safe to select these polygons at the front. And let's move these in place. Also on the image you can see it is growing slightly when we move to the left. So let's scale these polygons up. And now to create that second part, 
we will need to make an inner extrusion on these polygons we have selected. And as you may notice when you click and drag you can't see what is going on. I usually just try it a lot of times until it fits. After you release that inner extrusion, pick the extrude tool again by pressing D and make that extrusion all the way to the end of this piece. And then we can use the scale tool again to make it bigger and go in the same direction as the image. After that it is just the same techniques again using the inner extrusion tool and the extrude tool to get the same result as on the image. At the end also make sure it is going deep enough so it is all the way inside of the sphere so that way it will be fully connected. To make this connect to the wing let's take a look at the image again and you can see it is just a reflection of that first piece we made. So I'm going to select these polygons at the start and make an extrusion and just scale it up a little. Also if it isn't perfectly symmetrical you can go in the edge mode and use the loop selection tool by pressing U and L and try selecting this ring and then you can move it around so it is perfectly at the center of this piece. Okay next up are these connecting parts at the sphere and at the wing. Let's start with the connections at the sphere. You can just start off with a cube object and scale it down a lot. Try to line up this top right corner with the image. And after that we will make it editable and go in the edge mode so we can select one of the edges. This is easier in the perspective view. So let's get this outer left one and move it so it lines up with the image again. You can also see it is a little white right now. So go in the object mode and scale it horizontally until it looks like something that would fit in the scene. To wrap four of these around the cylinder we made, let's go up here to MoGraph and create a cloner. We can drag the cube we just made inside of it and set the mode to radial to make it clone in a circle. We will also need to set the plane orientation to ZY. And of course we need to decrease the radius so it fits. Okay now for the other connections at the inside of the wing. We can just duplicate this cloner to start with. And let's rotate this. We will also need to decrease the radius again. And after that we can go and select the cube we made. It has moved a little to the left. And now with the edge mode you can select the edges again to make it overlap with the image again. We will also be selecting the object itself and try to scale it horizontally again because you can see these are quite small. I also noticed there is another extrusion on the wing itself to connect with these pieces we just made. So let's go and select that polygon and make an extrusion and also scale it down a little so it is slanted. Another thing we need to do is making the count of the cloner go up from 4 to 6 because we have 6 connections on this one. And it also looks like I need to rotate this. You can do that while holding shift to make it line up perfectly. And the last problem this gives is that the connections which go in an angle to the top and the bottom are too small. We are going to adjust this manually. So what we need to do is selecting this cloner object and press C to make it editable. And now we have all these connections as single objects. I'm going to do this in the right view maybe. So what we can do now is selecting all the points at the end of every connection and use the move tool to put it in place. Okay so that is all there is to the connection with the wing and the sphere. So let's select all the objects we just made and group them together and call it connection to keep things clean. Okay we finally made it to the centerpiece. Let's start with this window at the front. We will need a circle on this sphere to line up with the window. But in the perspective view you can see we only have squares. So what we need to do is selecting the sphere and rotating it 90 degrees towards us. And that way we will have a different kind of lines that will line up with the window. I'm also going to duplicate the sphere already because I will be using this for a later part. So just do that for now and hide the duplicate of it. So select the sphere again and make it editable. And this way you can see how many polygons there are. We will go in the polygon mode and by the looks of it it already matches up with the window. So just select the rings by using the loop selection tool. 
And now let's go in the perspective view maybe and use the extrude tool to sink it a little inwards. Okay, now for this piece at the top you can see there's also a circle on it, but because we rotated the sphere, you can see we have these square polygons on the top again, which will not work to get this circle effect we want. Even if you use the loop cut tool, you can see it will not work. Because of that I made that duplicate of this sphere, so let's get that one. But we don't want to lose that part at the front, so scale it down a little until it is hidden. I'm going to hide this outer sphere so we can see what is going on. And of course we need to rotate the second sphere so the circles are pointing up. Now I will also need to set up the reference image on the top view to see how big the circle needs to be. So let's just do that quickly. And now we can go ahead and make sure the sphere is editable and use the loop cut tool to make a cut right where the circle goes. Let's select all the polygons inside of it again. And we will just use the extrude tool to make it go up a little. And that way we have this kind of simplified cap on the top of the sphere. Okay, next up you can see at the back of the sphere there would be some kind of engine exhaust or something. Instead of setting up a new view with a new reference image, I'm just going to rotate my sphere for a moment. And let's try to select this ring of edges. And if we move it outwards a little, you can see we get a nice effect that looks like a jet engine maybe. You can also scale it down a little to make it look even better. I'm also going to select this ring of polygons inside of it and make a small inner extrusion and move that around to give it a little more defined shape. Okay, let's rotate that sphere back in place. One of the last things we need to do for this centerpiece is making this pattern at the front of the window. This could be a little difficult if you try to do it in one single piece, but we will do it in two objects like we did on the wing. So go ahead and use a tube object. You might need to scale it down quite a lot and rotate it until it is small enough to fit on the sphere. And you want to make it line up with the center ring on the window, like this. Make sure the inner and the outer radius of the tube are correct. And when you get that right, you can go ahead and go in the object menu of the tube and go find that rotation segments field. And we will be decreasing that to something like 8. And that way it will line up with what we see on the image. Let's scale the height down a little and move it in place. Now we will do the same thing as we did on the wing parts, which is making sure the object is editable and selecting the edges at the corners. And this way we can use the bevel tool again and make the bevel. But this time we can use a chamfer instead of the solid bevel because we have a solid object which has a thickness to it instead of that single polygon we had earlier. So you can see the inner corners are still the same in comparison with the wing object we made where the corners at the inside were also being beveled. So now with the polygons selected, you can go ahead and use the extrude tool and you can see it will extrude in every direction. You may also want to stop somewhere in the middle and move it a little towards the sphere so it connects with the window. And make a second extrusion and do the same thing so it wraps around the window. I also feel like the center ring is a little thin in comparison with the beams. So I'm just going to select this inner loop of polygons and make an extrusion so it gets bigger. Let's zoom in on the top of the sphere. And if you look very closely, you can see the edges are a little rough. This is because we made the object editable and started manipulating the points and the edges. But luckily we can fix this by using a subdivision surface and grouping the spheres together and put that null inside of it. And now you can see it is smoother, but there are also a lot of details being lost. What we can do is selecting one of these parts and going in the edge mode. And with the loop cut tool we can add some cuts right at the edges of every sharp corner. So this one should be sharp, so we will be adding one cut at every side of it. Let's also do the same here at the window, also at the bottom. If you can't see where the original edge is, just try to disable the subdivision surface and you will be able to see it again. 
Also here at the bag, at the engine, let's add some cuts. Actually this piece even is taking advantage of the smoothing, so we will keep it mostly untouched. So now if you zoom in again and render, you can see it is perfectly smooth. Okay, so the center piece is done now, so let's group this all together and give it a name. And maybe we can also group this connection and the wing together. Because this way we can use a symmetry object and drag it inside of it. And that way it will automatically mirror itself to the other side of the sphere. Okay, so let's add some final details to the model. We will be adding these small indicator lights to the front and the back. The easiest way to do this is just adding a capsule object. Let's scale it down quite a lot and rotate it in place. Maybe we can also drag this inside of the symmetry, but also make sure it is in a group together with the wing, so the symmetry sees it has two objects inside of it instead of just the first one. Let's adjust the positioning, and I'm going to make this editable, and then we can go in the polygon mode and select the rings at the front, like this. And then with the extrude tool we can push it a little inwards, so it looks like this. Okay, now let's move this to the side. So it is duplicating itself with the symmetry object and we can push this in a little more. To make it also blend more with the sphere, let's pick one of these edge rings here and we're going to scale this up and maybe also move it a bit to the back so it is fully connected with the sphere. And that way it looks a little more in place instead of just a simple capsule sticking out of the sphere. So now we can pick this object and duplicate it and try to move it to the back. Let's try to line it up with the center of the sphere. Great, so that is it for the modeling part of the tutorial. Let's move on and add some lighting and materials, so we can wrap things up. A first thing you can do is going in the render settings and adding an ambient occlusion effect. So it is easier to see the small details, especially around the wings. A second thing we will do is adding an infinite light. We can keep the shadows turned off, because this will be just some kind of backlight, separating the object from the background. You don't have to move this light, just rotate it. And you want to rotate it to look something like this, where it is slightly towards us, but also pointing up. And that way you can see it gives a nice highlight at the bottom of the TIE Fighter. I'm also going to change the color a little, to something more bluish. The next light will be an area light. Let's move this to the front a little. And I'm also going to add an area shadow to this. And what I'm going to do now to make things easier is right clicking on this light and go in the Cinema 4D tags and let's take the target tag. Now we can assign what the light will look at, but first we need to group all these pieces together of the TIE Fighter so we can drag it inside of the target field. This way you will see when we move the light it will try to point towards the TIE Fighter. To get a better view of where you want to put the light, you can go up here to the Options menu and enable the shadows. This will make the viewport a little slower, but it is just temporary. And we are going to try to move the area light, so it gives a nice shadow on the arm or the connection, but not on the sphere itself. Just to give a little indication where the light is coming from. Okay, now you can see it is still very dark. So what we can do is adding just a light. And when we scroll down at these settings, you can add the ambient illumination option. You can see it will make things look a little dull. So what we need to do is decreasing the intensity to something like 15% maybe. And now you can see the details are coming back a little. I'm not going to move these lights anymore, so we can go to the options again and disable the shadows which will make things easier. Let's also go ahead and add a camera object so we can set the view. If you're not looking through the camera, so this white check mark is deselected, you can zoom out and find the camera object inside of the scene. And let's try to rotate this to give it a more dramatic effect. And when you look through the camera again, you will see the result. Maybe we can also go ahead and go in the settings of the camera Maybe change the focal length to something smaller, which will make the ship look bigger. I'm also going to adjust this backlight a little, because we changed the camera position. 
that when you are satisfied with the camera position, I recommend right clicking on it again, going in the Cinema 4D tags and adding a protection tag to it, so you can't accidentally move the camera. Now the last thing we will be doing is adding the materials. So let's create a new material. And this one will be the main color for the ship, so the metal parts. Let's make this a little bluish gray. And I'm also going down here to texture. Go to surfaces and add a metal texture. This will make everything look blue, but go inside of it. And try to change this last note, which is blue, to something more gray. Also let's increase the frequency to something like 5, so there is a little more patches on the ship. And now let's take a look at the reflectance channel. Let's already make this a little less visible by decreasing the intensity to something like 50%. We can also decrease the width a little. The fall off will be alright I guess. I'm also going to increase the inner width a little. And maybe we can increase the strength to a full 100%. Let's take a look when we drag this on the group and the render. You can see this is a little ugly right now. The metal patches are way too strong. So let's go to the color channel. And I want to set the mix mode to something like add, so it is less visible. And you can see this looks a lot better. Ok, the next material will be for the wing parts. This will be just some kind of very dark grey or even black, with a hint of blue in it. Let's also go to the reflectance channel and decrease the intensity to something like 20%. And all the rest should be fine. Let's go ahead and search the object we want to apply the material to. And in the polygon mode we are going to try to select the polygons which need the material. This can be a little tricky because we have three objects at a very similar position. So you may need to hide the other objects every time to apply the material to the right spot. Moving on to the next material. This one will be for the window. I'm going to make this a very dark grey or black again, but this time with a hint of red to it. And under the reflectance channel I'm going to add a backman layer to this. Maybe also decrease the intensity to 50%. And all the rest should be fine. Maybe even decrease the intensity a little more. Find your sphere and use the loop selection tool to select the right polygons. Then drag the material on it. I also see I missed the outer ring, so let's add that one as well. After applying this material, you can see the metal material is lost. So what we need to do is applying it manually to the sphere, but that way it will override the window material. So at the right here, you will need to switch the order. Let's create a new material for the lights at the front and the back. We are going to disable the color channel and just use the luminance channel. Let's make this red. And find that original capsule where we can apply the red on just this front piece we extruded. It should still be selected if you go in the polygon mode. Also the same thing as on the sphere. You will notice the original texture will be lost. So you need to change the order at the right. Let's render this and take a look. This is starting to look like the example I showed you guys. But it is still a little dark, especially around the wings. So what I would like to do now is adding a new light. And this one will be a specular light. Which means that it will only give the highlights on the objects. And not lighting in general. To do that we need to scroll down. And disable the diffuse and the GI illumination. But make sure the specular is still turned on. Maybe go in the top view and zoom out a lot. Because we need to put this very far away. And if you're on a newer version of Cinema 4D you can see where the reflections are going in the perspective view. I think this will look fine, so let's take a render again. And you can see this dramatically improved the look of the wings. The last thing we can add is a space background behind it. So I'm going to create a new material. Disable the color and the reflectance channel, but get a luminous channel. Let's add one of the free backgrounds you can find on Google on it. Create a sky object and drag the material on it. And you can see you can rotate the sky to get a nicer looking result. In this case for this background it is a little bright for my liking. So I'm going back in this material. And let's decrease the mix strength of this texture or image. One final detail we may need to tweak are the small lights. 
They are so small that you can barely see them and they are not very bright. The easiest solution to this is adding lights right in front of them. So go ahead and create a new light. We are going to make this a red light of course and try to line it up so it is just very slightly in front of it. Maybe decrease the intensity a little because it is a small light so it doesn't need to be this strong. And to give it a little glow to it, we can go ahead and make this visible. If you zoom out you should be able to see how big the light will be visible. So this is way too big. But you can scale this down with the scale tool or with the small yellow points if you're in the object mode. So let's create some duplicates of this to the other sides. And let's render again. And maybe we can even increase the intensity a little so it is even more visible. And this way you can see it is much better than before. Okay, so that is all there is to modeling and texturing this kind of low poly TIE fighter. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. Also feel free to send your results on Instagram or Twitter. And I also hope to see you in the next video.